Hi, welcome to my channel. Today, I'm gonna show you guys everything I made in my first year of consistent sewing. If this is the first video of mine you're seeing, my name's Rachel, thanks for stopping by. All right, so in case you didn't see the first video I ever posted on my channel, I give you kind of a brief history of how I started sewing. So before I made all these clothes, I did know how to use a sewing machine. I had followed a couple really simple patterns in the past, but I really didn't have that much experience sewing clothes for myself, clothes for other people. I was six months pregnant when the pandemic started. I went through pregnancy, I came out of pregnancy. We were still very isolated for a long time. So we moved from Seattle to Boston about two years ago. So when we got to Boston and got all settled in, it was fall and then spring came up and I was digging through all of my clothes and realized everything that I had was from like 2016 to 2018. Some things didn't really fit me right. Some things just didn't feel like they suited my life anymore. And so I needed to go shopping. I started shopping, it was really frustrating. I was just kind of settling for stuff. And then I decided that I was gonna make myself a few things. And since then, I have made over 60 things. So I thought it would be fun if I kind of just showed you guys everything today and just share with you guys some of the lessons I learned and some of my goals for this next year. All right, let's go try on some clothes. All right, so here are all of the clothes I made this year. This is just the clothes. I'll probably show you a bunch of the bags and stuff that I made at the end of this video. I made, let's see. Uh, 16 bags, <laughs> but I'm gonna start with trying on all of these clothes for you guys as you can see This is not a capsule at all. So just kind of getting into sewing this year I really wanted to try a bunch of different types of fabric I just kind of tried a little bit of everything and I feel like I got a nice variety But you can kind of tell that I am drawn to a lot of the same colors I am an autumn I think I'm a true autumn. What do you guys think? I think I'm a little bit too high contrast to be a soft autumn But as you can see there are some soft autumn colors in here, but definitely some true autumn colors too. So, so I've sorted all of these oldest to newest. All right, so the first thing that I made last year was this shirt. So this is the puffy dress by Tropical Research and this is what the pattern looks like. So yeah, it was supposed to be a dress. It looked really cool on the model. It did not look cool on me. I also think that part of that was just because of the fabric that I chose for it. So this is 100% cotton. It's like a quilting cotton. I'm really glad that I used this to start out with my first project because it was super, super easy to work with, but it definitely hangs a little bit differently than the linen that she's wearing in these pictures. I'll show you a picture of what I looked like in the dress. It kind of looked like a tent on me. It was not cute on me at all. So I chopped the bottom off and I loved it as a shirt. So I actually have worn this quite a bit. It's just really breezy. It's, it's nice to wear like on a warm day. Um, I was really proud of the inside of this shirt because this was the first time I had ever done French seams. So this is what they look like on the inside. It looks really nice. At this point in time, I didn't have a serger. So it was really nice to have finished insides um, without needing to do any overlocking. So I was so glad that this was the first pattern I used. Tobias makes really, really good instructions for his patterns. And I feel like every time I use one of the patterns from Tropical Research, I learn so much. And so this was a great starting point. And you'll notice I really like this pattern. I wanted to make my daughter a matching dress. So I made this cute thing for her. I can't believe she could wear this last year. This is the Lucy dress by Paper Doll Pattern Co. And you'll notice it looks a little bit different and that's just because I added these little bell sleeves onto it. So I just kind of gathered some fabric and added those onto the end for a little bit more sleeve length. And also on the back, this is supposed to be buttoned, but I was really nervous to do any buttonholes at that point. So I just did this little tie at the top. I thought it was really cute, it did the trick. I also did French seams all throughout this one too, after I'd learned how to do that with the puffy shirt. You'll notice that the top right here is starting to fray and that's just because I didn't leave enough seam allowance when I was doing the neck binding. It was my second project. So <laughs> there are gonna be some rough areas, especially around like this back closure and stuff too. You can definitely tell that this is homemade. So I've heard before, if you are starting to sew, you should be aiming to make things that look handmade, not homemade. I know that some of these things are definitely going to look homemade, um, but you know, I'm just starting out. So this looks a little homemade if you look really, really close at it. I'll probably keep this forever anyway. All right, so next was this dress. 
it turned out really cute, but it was a journey to make for sure. Uh, this is the pattern I used for this dress. And while I love this dress, it was very, very difficult to figure out the first time just because the instructions were really vague and not knowing much about sewing, it was a little difficult for me to figure out what the instructions really meant. Um, and there were no illustrations or pictures or anything. So I'm amazed that I finished this. So this is a zipper in the back and there is a facing on this and I'd never done a facing before. So there's a facing on the back and there's a facing on the front. And you'll also notice I did top stitching along the front. This was before I knew what under stitching was. So this kind of flops out a tiny bit in, at the top. It doesn't really bother me all that much. Um, you won't be able to tell when I'm wearing it, but also the big issue with this dress was the fit. When I first put it on, this whole panel was way, way, way too wide. So it was just gaping in the back. And I don't know where I went wrong because I took my measurements, I cut out the right size and everything, but the fit was way off. So once I made this dress, I adjusted this back panel size and everything, and you'll see that on the next one I show you. I also really like what this fabric looks like, but it is that quilting cotton, so it isn't quite as like flowy as I wanted it to be, but that's okay. After making that dress I made this one and this is kind of more of that flowy fabric I was telling you about so this is just a seersucker cotton I love this fabric so much this is probably one of my favorite fabrics I use and whenever I see this I have to get more of it because I'm sure I'll use it more this summer too but this is how this dress turned out this was a lot less frustrating to work on just because I kind of knew what to do the differences about this dress I really don't think there were many differences um I didn't have an invisible zipper so I just have white zipper in right now I'll probably switch that out but yeah I just really love how this one feels I wore this dress so much last summer and it still like kind of smells like sunscreen, which I really actually like. This is my roll out of bed, throw this on. I don't have to do anything to like feel fancy. But yeah, again, I top stitched the top because I didn't know what under stitching was yet. So, but yeah, I love this dress. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> So again, I needed to make a matching dress for my daughter and this was just super simple. This is also the Lucy pattern. Um, it's just the other version with these cute little ties at the top. And this is really nice. It's just all adjustable. So this is a really quick dress to make. I will probably make like a million of these for Roz. She wore this a lot last summer. It's a perfect thing to just toss on her with some little bike shorts and she can play in it when it's like 90 degrees outside. It's just like really light, airy and comfy for her to run around and get messy in. And another thing that I really like about these dresses is she'll be able to wear this this summer even though she's grown a lot. She'll probably just wear this as a shirt. So her shorts will stick out like this much at the bottom. But It'll still be really cute on her this year. All right, so next is this cute little crop tank top. It's like tie back and this is self-drafted. So I made this using kind of a pattern I had made like five years ago, but I made it a lot better just construction wise. I'll show you what I made a few years ago. So this is one of the shirts I made a long time ago. I wear this ton in the summer. This is just a linen. It's super soft now because I've washed it a million times. This is definitely one of those things that looks homemade, but I kind of like that, you know, you can definitely tell that I made it myself because <laughs> yeah, these straps are just kind of tacked on. However, um, the thread doesn't really match the fabric. I also didn't know how to finish seam allowances or anything. So I just kind of pressed them open and sewed them down and hoped that someday they would stop fraying. But yeah, I even added darts, even though I didn't really know how to do that. So I was really proud of this when I made it and I still am because yeah, I, I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just kind of messing around with my sewing machine when I made this, but I did keep the pieces of tracing paper that I used to make this and I made this better one um, so it is the same shape and everything it's just all finished on the inside so there is a lining it doesn't go all the way to the bottom because I like this to be thin so that it kind of bunches up at the bottom when I tie this up 
but yeah these are doubled and that means that these are attached really nicely they're like sandwiched between these two layers of fabric and it's the same in the back here the darts are a lot nicer too and this is all zigzag stitched at the bottom so everything is finished on this and I wear this all the time too this is just kind of a throw on top Next is another puffy top. Here it is. I love this shirt. I feel so fancy on this shirt. This fabric is just super silky and drapey and beautiful and I love this color. I don't know, it's not gold. It's not off-white. It's like a champagne-y, I don't know. It's magic. That is kind of obnoxious. Like this is not a mellow shirt at all. And I just, I really love how it hangs with this pattern. And I love the tie sleeves. <sighs> There are so many things about this shirt that I love. Anything that has long straps attached to it, anything that has like big sleeves, I love big sleeves. Like I'm not really big on like puffy sleeves at the top, but I love a good bell sleeve or a big gathered sleeve on the bottom. And this is just so much fun. This is the first time I ever used a silky fabric and I did not do bias cut anything on this, I don't think. I didn't really know what that meant at this point, but I was really proud of myself that I managed to make anything with a satiny silky fabric. I had heard that silky fabrics were tricky because they like to move around and slip and they're hard to pin and they like to stretch on you. Since this isn't bias cut, I, did, I do think that that helped and that was a little bit easier for me, but it was a really good practice for using silky fabric. this shirt and this is in that seersucker cotton that I really like. This is the Olivia top from Slow Morning Studio and I absolutely love this top. It's backless which is another thing that I love. I love anything that's low in the back or tie back or backless and this ties at the bottom and it ties at the top. So this tie right here it kind of keeps the shoulders from drooping down and it is really low in the front but surprisingly it is pretty easy to wear even running around and chasing my daughter and I think that's just because this fabric is a little bit more structured so it stays pretty close to my chest. Also that being said uh, these kind of stick out a little bit more since this fabric isn't really that drapey but I kind of like it. It's kind of fun. The only thing that I had a problem with on this one is that I attached this back part wrong so this is supposed to be flipped this other way. Way. It looks correct when it's hanging up, but when it's on, you'll see that it's twisted, but that's okay. I still wear it. You can't tell. Nobody would be able to tell unless they were like this close to me, which would never happen. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'll probably make a few more of these this summer too, because I did wear this a lot last summer. I love the shirt. <laughs> self-drafted stretchy tank top. So this is very basic and boring, but it's super, super comfy. I wear this a lot in the summer. I don't really remember how I made this. I know I traced one of my tank tops that I already have and I just kind of adjusted it a little bit. So I made a deep scoop on one side and kind of a little bit more of a square side. Uh, so I can wear this this way and this way. I wanted it to be kind of like seamless. I didn't want any top stitching or anything. So the bottom doesn't have any seam at all. And then all of these seams are kind of like on the inside here. And then I kind of did something weird for the top. So I just did a ladder stitch to attach these two pieces. And I think it turned out pretty good. I mean, if I were to make this again, I would probably do it a different way just to make it a little bit easier on myself. But yeah, I really like how this turned out. It's really, really soft, comfy, stretchy, and versatile. <laughs> So next, I made another one of these Olivia tops, and this is in this beautiful, perfect terracotta crushed velvety satin. And this hangs a lot differently. This is a little bit more difficult to wear taking care of a kid, but for like a date night or something, it's perfect. But yeah, I love how this one turned out. I also attached these back parts correctly this time. So you'll see when I try it on that it hangs correctly. You can kind of see it looks twisted, 
when it's all put together right here, but when it's on, it makes sense. So I made this one and then I also made a matching skirt. So this is the Frankie wrap skirt. It's a free pattern. So I really love how this turned out. So it is a real wrap skirt. So this is what it looks like unwrapped. And then you just kind of wrap it around and tie it on one side. I wear both of these together and separately. Together they look like a really cute dress. And so I've definitely worn it that way. So separately, they're more casual together. They're really, really fancy. Okay, and then next is one of my very favorite things that I've made, and it's this dress. So this is the low cut, this is the low cut neckline gathers dress pattern by Boleyn Patterns, and I changed this quite a bit. The pattern originally has you gather all of this, sew it into place, and then you add this decorative bow, and then you do that for both of these ties, and then it has a zipper up the back, and then it's the same thing for the shoulders. They're all gathered and sewn into place, but I really wanted this to be super adjustable, so I made all of these channels, and all of these are functional drawstrings, so even the shoulders are functional drawstrings, so if I want these to be like short sleeves they can be if I want this to be really loose it can be I usually wear it cinched up tighter but yeah I just really love being in control of the fit and I also added a lining on this one so that's the first time I ever used real lining on a dress so I didn't really know how to do this I sort of figured it out it does look a little bit like a mess on the inside just right here where the skirt and the top linings meet, but that's okay, it doesn't really bother me. This was also before I had a serger, so um, I just did zigzag stitches to kind of finish those edges. The other thing about this dress is that the bottom is kind of wonky. So this side is a little bit stretched down and this side is too, so at some point I just need to like chop it off and rehem the bottom. I think just as it's hung, it's just kind of stretched a little bit. So I just need to fix that up, but I've worn it plenty of times, kind of asymmetrical <laughs> at the bottom, and it doesn't really bother me that much, but I would like to make it perfect at the bottom too. I also love how low this is in the back. This is like right at my waist, but it's a nice little open back moment, and I can still pick up my daughter in this. All right, so the next thing is pretty obnoxious, and this is it. <laughs> so this is two pieces. So this is the asymmetrical cross shoulder top by Make It Yours The Label, and this is how I just kind of hung it up, kind of funky, but this is what it looks like. So it has two little cups. This strap goes through this channel and this kind of scrunches down. I'm really surprised that it turned out this good because there is some gathering in the sides here. The instructions on this top were really great. I did need to add some little foam pads in here just to keep this part from sinking down. I'm a little bit small on the chest and so I need some structure in this top to keep it from just like collapsing on me. So uh, I felt like that really helped a lot. And then I had to make matching pants because this print is just so fun. So I had to make these matching pants, another pattern by Make It Yours The Label. I'll probably use this again in the future. They're just these comfy flare pants. I have worn this set to a Mamma Mia themed party. But I also wear this just kind of lounging around the house. I think it's really fun to have just like an obnoxiously printed set of lounge clothes. And I don't know, I kind of feel like I'm on vacation whenever I wear these, so. another one of these twisty tops. I made it in this color. I know this isn't really my color, uh, not at all. It's just this beautiful pastel-y lilac color. I really like this pattern in 
a solid. I do think I want to make this in a few more neutral colors, more like autumn friendly colors. Once I put this on again, I realized how much I like it. I kind of forget about this top sometimes just because I wear this for certain occasions. I don't really wear this much and I think it's just because of the color. So I'll have to make it in a couple other colors. Lucy dresses for my daughter and this is just a size up from the last one I made this halfway through the summer and she still got a lot of use out of it so this top is that same gingham print that I used for the other dress and then the bottom of it is this really pretty block printed fabric my next door neighbor went to India and she brought this back last summer so recently she brought back a whole bunch of other block printed fabric for me so if you haven't watched my fabric video uh, you can go and see all those fabrics in that but this is one that she brought back last summer and I love it so much. It's just such beautiful colors. And this is cute paisley print. This cotton is super, super lightweight. So this is another great one for Rosalind to wear on super hot days. So next, this was not a success, I guess. So this is a cowl neck cami. This is the pattern I used for it. And I do really like how this top looks from the front, but for some reason in the back, I was left with a lot more fabric than I needed. I don't know if I measured myself wrong or did like the wrong size or something, but I do still like how this turned out. I just kind of wanted to try a cowl neck something. I'd never done cowl neck before. I also really like how this back part, it's not just two straps, it's like this little crossover part at the top. I will probably try this pattern again because now that I have more experience, I just think that I do a better job on it. It's cute, it could be a little bit better. I'll probably make it again. All right, and then next I made my first slip dress. So this is the Celeste slip dress and I really like the fit of this dress from the front. I really like how this is a really nice wide square cowl neck. It's not like a super deep cowl. The sides really do hug nicely. Like they fit close to my body. The only thing with this dress is that I could not get the fit in the back correct. So there is a little bit of puckering like right on the booty and I have tried taking it out. I have tried taking it in. I don't really know how to fix that. I'm sure at some point I will be able to fix it once I figure out what I'm doing. But yeah, I do really like how this dress looks, but unfortunately I just haven't worn it yet because the fit is just not right. Something that I didn't learn until kind of recently is that when you are cutting on the bias, the front and the back need to be cut going opposite directions. So not like this or like this, but like this. And that's because if you cut them both kind of going the same way, your dress will kind of want to twist on you. So as you're wearing it, it will kind of all stretch as it stretches down, it'll all twist the same direction. And I definitely feel that happening with this dress, even hanging on this hanger, you can kind of see that this is starting to curve this way. When I try it on, you'll definitely be able to see it. So yeah, next time I try to use this pattern again, I will definitely be cutting it correctly. Also, I do think that this fabric just doesn't have as much stretch as a lot of the other satins I use. So maybe just using a different fabric would fix the fit problem too. again it's this tie back dress and I did a few things different on this dress so first you can obviously tell this is short so I shortened up all the tiers it's still three tiers but this bottom is more of like a ruffle than a full tier I just really wanted to make this dress in white linen and this is another one of those dresses that I wear all the time in the summer it's just really breezy easy to throw on so in the back you'll notice I did not use a zipper at all and that's because I added elastic in here instead and I really love that it makes it a little bit more comfortable but also having to add a zipper 
and everything is just kind of a pain. So this made it a lot easier. Also, I had learned how to do understitching. So actually, that was uh, something I learned how to do on this top. So this whole facing is understitched. So that's when you open it up and you sew the seam allowance to the facing so that it keeps the facing from popping out in the front and you don't actually see that stitching from the front either. So I did that on this dress and it looks so nice from the front. There's no stitching, but yeah, this facing stays in really nicely. And I did uh, tie straps at the top too, just so it's a little bit more adjustable. And I just think it's cute to have little bows at the top. I love this dress. I've worn this a ton. So that was everything that I made in the summertime. And then we got more into fall stuff. So the first thing I made in the fall is another puffy shirt. So I got this really nice and soft viscose and cotton window pane plaid. I love this color. I love this shirt. Again, this hangs a little bit differently than both of the other fabrics I've used. Also something that I did a little bit different on this one is I had these two parts cross over just a little bit. So I feel like this one stays up on my shoulders a little bit more. I do still like it kind of wide on the shoulders, but but adding that little bit of crossover does help a little bit. All right, and next I just wanted to make a basic long sleeve black shirt, but I found this pattern and I made this really cute, just kind of crisscross uh, top and this is a form-fitting long sleeve shirt, but it has a little bit of pizzazz It's just really nice and low in the front. This does kind of gap a little bit So I wanted to take up the sides a little bit You'll notice on the next one that I did and I do like it pulled up just a little bit more Like I said, my chest is really small So I think that this is just meant to fit somebody with a little bit larger chest than I have So I did have to make a little bit of an adjustment on the next one that I'll show you I like how open it is just across the chest, but it does still keep me covered and I feel really comfortable in this. So this is the other one I made. This one fits me a little bit better in the front. I just took it up like half of an inch, just right on the inside of the shoulders, not even towards the outside, but just in the front. And I feel like this fits me really well too. I love this color. Like I said, it's one of my favorite colors to wear, this kind of brick red terracotta color. I had a third one. And if you would watched this video, I made this in a really beautiful mossy green faux cashmere. And I'll have to tell you guys about that in a little bit. All right, so next I made this really cute tie front top and I used this pattern from Vicky Sews and I love how this turned out. I love these like kind of puffy sleeves. These are a little bit short on me, but I also think that I used the wrong size pattern. So I should have made this in a size larger. I do still like how it fits, but yeah, the sleeves are a little bit short on me. I even used the long sleeve option on this. I do have really long arms, so I, I do think that I could have made them a little bit longer. But yeah, I'm super proud of how this turned out because at this point it probably was one one of the more complicated patterns I'd used. And I used a really hard fabric for this pattern. So I didn't realize how difficult this fabric was going to be to use until I started using it, unfortunately. So this is a polyester fabric. So it will not iron. Even if I try to press it with my iron, it doesn't crease at all. So it's nice that it doesn't wrinkle. I can like wad it up into a ball and pack it for something and it never wrinkles, but it's really, really hard to do this button placket and these kind of complicated sleeves and stuff. It's also one of the first patterns I used with buttons. You can't really see the buttons. They kind of blend into this fabric, but I was really excited about how these button holes turned out and I made a matching skirt. All right, so this skirt was self-drafted. I just kind of used a skirt that I already had and I wanted to make the front of this just flat and I wanted the back to be elastic so it looks kind of fancy from the front but you still have 
all that comfy stretch. It does have a few tiers on it and it has a cute little slit just on the bottom tier. I really like how this turned out. I wear these two together and separate. Um, I feel like together they're like pretty fancy looking again, but separately I feel like they're a lot more casual. And I also made a couple of videos making this set. There's a part one and a part two. So if you haven't watched that, check it out. So next, I made this really cute pinafore dress using the trendy dress pattern from Aura Patterns. This was also a really vague pattern, but it's okay because it was really simple to make. I used this really pretty tweed. It's kind of like a, I don't know, a blushy taupe, and it has a little bit of copper in it, some little gold sparkles in it too. And I doubled it, so it kind of feels like a sweater dress a little bit. I just did this fringy bottom, which I think is really fun. It adds a little bit of flair. I've worn this so much. I think I've worn this like eight or nine times already. Already. <laughs> and it's just one of those things that feels like pajamas on but it looks a little bit fancy and it's just kind of fun it's kind of festive all right and next is this dress so this is the Sicily slip dress. I made this for a holiday party I was going to at my husband's school. So I found this fabric and I just really wanted to make something simple with it because the fabric is so detailed and really, really cool. So I just wanted to make something that was easy and I only had a couple days to put this together. So I wanted to use a pattern that everybody loves and I had never used this pattern before and it turned out really good. So I didn't use this pattern as intended with this fabric. So as you can tell, these lines are Straight. I didn't want these lines to be diagonal, so I didn't do bias cut. I also did not do French seams on the side. I just kind of left them raw like this because this fabric doesn't bray at all. I didn't want to do French seams just because I could not iron this fabric at all. This is probably the hardest fabric I've ever used. My pins didn't even like going through this fabric because it kind of has like a squeaky feel to it, I guess. So the inside is like this satin fabric and the outside has this silver coating over it. So I thought this was gonna be really easy to put pins through. I thought it was gonna feel like tissue paper but my pins just get stuck. So I use mainly clips. Do you have a video of me making this dress if you wanna watch it? But yeah, I love how this dress turned out. I'll definitely be wearing this again. Since I used the Sicily dress, but I didn't use it as intended, I wanted to use it the correct way, so I did, and I made this really pretty slip dress. So the fabric I used is this really pretty satin, and this dress fits me perfectly. I really love how it hangs as a bias cut dress. The insides are all French seams too, so this dress turned out perfect. I love it. I forgot to mention, I did add little waist ties on both of these dresses, and that's just because I've noticed that these dresses don't really hug around my waist like I wanted them to and there's a little bit of gapping in the back. So adding this little tie kind of draws that together and kind of gives the top kind of a blousey effect, which I really like. I will definitely wear this dress with or without. It just depends on what kind of look I'm going for. It looks a little bit more relaxed and casual without the tie, but if I'm going for a little bit more dressy, I like a little bit more waist definition. made right before the holidays was this really adorable dress for my daughter. So this is the Lily Pinafore and it turned out so, so cute. I used this plaid fabric. So I actually got this fabric in Paris and it is my husband's family tartan. So I needed to get this for Christmassy dress. It's a super, super common plaid. So I'm sure you've seen it before. This turned out super cute. I made a matching dress for my niece and this is what it looks like. So they were so cute together. They took some Santa pictures in these. I do really like the length of this dress too. I feel like it's long enough that my daughter can probably wear it next winter too. The sides have this really nice little elastic, so it makes it really comfortable. Like she could get into all sorts of trouble in this dress and still look cute as a button. 
Hi guys. All right, so it's a new day. My camera battery is charged and we're gonna finish looking at all this stuff. But first, I wanted to show you something that I forgot and it was going to fit in right about here. And that is my daughter's Halloween costume. And here it is. So this is SpongeBob's house. Um, it does have a hat too, but I don't know where it went. So she was wearing it the other day when I pulled this out. And since then it has disappeared. So it's probably going to show up in a really interesting location, but I have this for now. And hopefully I can show you guys a picture of what it looks like all together. So basically the way that I made this, I just traced her sleeping sack onto some lining and some of this fleece and I added these little fleece details into it too and then I just stitched on these little felt things and I drew all the details on them with a sharpie and then I added some elastic in the bottom here and I added some velcro at the top here so it's really easy to put on and take off I also added these little flowers at the bottom they're just tool flowers and she wore this with little floral leggings she looked so cute in this I did fill it with batting too so that's why it is so fluffy and it was just the perfect little pineapple costume. So Patrick and I had dressed as Patrick Star and Sandy Cheeks a couple years ago and we still had our costumes and we wanted to wear them again and we figured this is probably the last year we can just pick our daughter's Halloween costume. I'm sure she'll have preferences next year. So I just thought this was a really fun idea and she really likes it. She still wears it around the house. There's cat hair on it. There's chocolate on the front from Halloween. So I did not want to forget to put this in this video. So there it is. So I think we left off with this dress after we were traveling for the holidays, came back. I really wanted to make a bag. So I made this one right here. So this is the banana bag and this is another one of those tropical research sewing patterns. I love this bag a lot. I wear this all the time. I should probably wash it or something, but it's just made of this really heavy duty canvas. And then I have this brass hardware on it. So I went to the LA fabric district with my mother-in-law and I found a bunch of this brass hardware at a really cool little hardware store there. Um, I'll probably go through and stitch this into place a little bit more because these like to twist around. But yes, I wear this constantly. So I loved this bag so much, I ended up making three of them. I made them all at different times, but I'm just gonna show them to you guys all together. So I made this one first, and then for one of my husband's birthday presents, I made this one for him. So I got this darker brass hardware for this one, and then I used just a regular metal zipper, and I lined his with some of this really beautiful block printed fabric. So this fabric is also one that I got in the LA Fabric District. This is a denim, but it kind of has a velvety texture to it. And I really like how this one turned out. I'll probably borrow it from him at some point. And then, since I was using my canvas one so much, I figured I should make another one for myself. So I made this one out of this really pretty denim. It is pretty bright right now, and I think that once it gets hot outside, I'll probably set it out in the sun and see if it'll kind of naturally fade. But I still really like what it looks like right now. I did do all this top stitching like contrast top stitch which I was really proud of because I'd never used top stitching thread before so it was a little bit different I had to adjust the tension on my machine quite a bit but it turned out really good and I lined mine with another one of these block printed fabrics and I really love how it looks together it's just really cute and I've been wearing this a ton so I'll probably make more of them I kind of want to try a leather version I'm not really sure how my machine is going to tolerate that but we will see for Patrick. I also made him this. So this was one of his birthday presents as well. I love this shirt. I love how this turned out. I have been looking for a sewing pattern to make Patrick a shirt with for a long time. And it's just kind of tricky with Patrick because he's tall and he is like pretty narrow too. So trying to figure out a pattern that was going to fit him just right was a little bit daunting and I'm not very good at adjusting patterns yet. So that's definitely something I want to work on this next year. But I managed to find the perfect sewing pattern for Patrick's proportions.
proportions. This fits Patrick perfectly. And this is the sewing pattern I use. It's the tropical shirt pattern by Wardrobe by Me. And the instructions were great. There were pictures and there's a YouTube video to follow. So I used kind of both of them together and it turned out really good. Uh, I really love how the collar turned out. And this is also the first project that I used my serger on. So Patrick got me a serger for Christmas and um, my mother-in-law Stacy helped him find it on eBay. It's the same one that she has and she's had it for years and years and loves it and I love it too. So all the insides are nicely finished. I love having a serger now, so it makes such a big difference. Everything just seems so much neater and more professional. It makes things like this seem like they're gonna last a lot longer. So it has totally changed my sewing life. So thanks Patrick, thanks Stacy for doing all the research. This shirt is made of really heavyweight linen. This is actually home decor fabric. I found this on sale. It's nice and structured on him and he loves it too. So since I got a serger, I really wanted to work with more knits. So I made this shirt and I used a pattern by Socialite Patterns called the Dolman Loose Wrap Top Pattern. And it turned out so good. I love this so much. So this is some knit fabric that I got a long time ago. If you saw my first fabric video that I ever posted, you probably recognize this fabric. It has this kind of knit texture to it and it's really lightweight and kind of airy. So I feel like I'm gonna be able to wear this a lot in the summertime on like an evening, but I have worn it a ton around the house. I can wear this three different ways. I can wear it tied on the side, tied in the back, or I can flip it around and have this in the front. So I really love having that versatility. It is a nice loose fit. It can be tight around the waist, but it does gather in the back and it has these nice dome and sleeves. This is super, super comfortable. So the only thing about this that I don't love is that the sleeves are a little bit short on me, but in this lightweight fabric, I don't really mind it. They're kind of three quarter length sleeves on me. And I do plan on making this several more times. So I'll just have to remember that for the future, but I love this so much. And right after I finished that and realized how much I liked it, I had to make another one in this green cashmere. So I have used this fabric before and it was to make one of these shirts and I actually made a video about it. So while I love this pattern, I didn't particularly love it in this fabric. So this is a really beautiful faux cashmere. It's kind of like a thicker fuzzy fabric. So when I used it on this shirt, it kind of had this fluttery edge. It kind of looked like a lettuce hem, but it wasn't supposed to look like a lettuce hem. And I thought when I made it that I wasn't going to mind that at all, but then I found myself not really wearing it ever. But I also just didn't love how fitted it was. I think if I want something fitted, I want it to be in like this jersey or like a ribbed knit or something. So once I finished this one, I just wished that I had saved this fabric to make this shirt. So you know what I did? I went and I saw how much I had left of this fabric, which was not much. And I cut out the main pieces. I think what I got out of it was like this main piece and then half of one of these straps. So then I cut the other shirt up that I had made with this fabric and I used all those pieces for the rest of the shirt. And I'm so, so glad I did. I didn't think that it was gonna happen. The only thing that I had to do differently is these sleeves are not just like one piece. I ended up having to do one piece on this side and one piece on this side. So I had to add a seam allowance for the top of the sleeve. But yeah, I'm so glad that I redid this shirt and now I wear it all the time.
one is another one of these shirts that I made for my husband. So this is again that tropical shirt. And for this one, I used this really beautiful block printed fabric. This was also in my newest fabric video along with a bunch of other block printed fabrics. But this is the first like big project I use the block printed fabric for. And I love how this turned out. It's nice and flowy. It's a lot lighter weight. So I think that this is going to be something that you can wear really casually in the summer. And it's just really nice to see it in a different fabric. I also made a video making this. So if you want to go watch that, I'll link it for you. All right, so next is another thing that I made for my daughter, and here it is. So I made her this the day before Easter so that she could wear it for Easter. We didn't really have any big plans for Easter or anything, but I just thought it would be so cute if she had a little bunny dress. So for this dress, I used the Amy dress pattern by Paper Doll Pattern Co. And again, I really like their patterns. Uh, this is the second pattern that I used from them. The pattern does not include these cute little bunny pockets, but they're super easy to make. Rosalind absolutely loves bunnies, so this is probably like one of her favorite items of clothing whenever she sees it she wants to wear it so she has worn this to Costco she's worn it to the playground she's gotten food all over it I've watched it a couple times already and it's just like a really comfy dress for her it's nice and long too so I feel like she's gonna be able to wear this for a while and it does have buttons at the back so I actually did use buttons for this dress and they turned out pretty good now that she is almost three she's starting to have really strong preferences for what she wears so it's just fun to see her reaching for something that I made her. So next I have a few different things that I've been making for some of my friends who are having babies. So next is this little dress and this is another one of those little tie top dresses by Paper Doll Pattern Co. I made it in this really cute linen blend. It's like a window pane plaid. I just love this fabric. But yeah, this is for one of my friends little babies that's due this summer. I also made these cute little bloomers to go with it and these are the Freya bloomers by me my sewing and they're super easy to make I feel like I can make these in like an hour they have elastic at the top nice little paper bag waist and then they've got a little elastic around the legs both of the top and the bottoms are size six to nine months so I feel like that will be perfect for my friend's baby next spring and summer and then for that same little baby I made a cute little like newborn set so here are those same Freya bloomers and this is in zero to three months I just think they're so cute and they're so little um and this is another one of those linen blends it has this little botanical print on it I just thought those were so cute I also made a little matching bonnet and this is also in zero to three months I need to clean it up a little bit I've got some hanging threads and I need to do some hand stitching just to seal all of this but this is what the bonnet looks like. It has a little brim on it. And I just think that's so cute. So I figured she would just wear these two together with a little onesie in the summertime and that would be super cute. And another one of my good friends just had a baby. So I made her daughter this cute little dress and it's another one of those little tie top dresses. So this is a 12 month dress. And so I figured that her daughter could wear this next spring and summer as well. Um, I do need to make some matching bloomers and I'll also use that same Freya pattern for those ones too. All right, so next is this tank top that I made for myself. So this is just a knit tank top. I used the Kate pattern by Issa and Stitches. I really love this boat neck neckline. It's kind of just wide and it's kind of up high. I really like a good high neckline on myself. I do feel like sometimes like the high and close necklines kind of make me feel a little bit constricted in the neck. So I really love having this nice wide open boat neck. I feel like I need to make more basics because as much as I love to think of myself as somebody who's going to wear like a beautiful dress every day, I just don't. I feel like there are plenty of days where I just want to throw on a pair of jean shorts and a tank top and call it good. A lot of days I'm just bringing my daughter to the splash pad or to a playground and something like this is just a little bit more appropriate for a situation like that. So I did make three of these. So I made this one in that same really soft jersey material. And you'll notice that the bottom of this is not finished. And that's because I have a bad habit of not finishing the bottoms of knit tops that I make. I wouldn't really say it's a bad habit because it's not like this is going to fray or anything anyway. And a lot of the time it's just covered up. Like I'm gonna tuck it in to something and you're never gonna see it. I can always go back and finish it if it bothers me, but I just really don't think it's going to. But I'll show you on the other ones too. I have not finished the bottoms of any of them. So here's another one of those tank tops. And this is a fabric from one of my older fabric videos too. This fabric is like the same color as my skin, which 
which I don't really, I don't know if that's a good thing, but I don't think it's a bad thing. I feel like it just kind of goes with my skin tone. It doesn't really do anything like spectacular for me, but it is so, so neutral. I feel like I can wear this under a leather jacket and it will look cute, or I can just wear it with some white pants and it'll look nice. But I do love this ribbed material. It's just a really kind of like springy stretch. This one just feels like really nice quality. It's just kind of a heavy feeling tank top, which maybe not on like a super, super hot day, but I think that I'll like that for most other days in the spring and summer. Okay, and then for the third time, I made the same tank top, but in this navy ribbed material. Um, this one is a little bit thicker too, so I don't love this one, and that's just because I don't know how often I'm going to wear it. Maybe I'll wear this underneath like a light sweater on a chillier evening or something, but I cannot see myself reaching for this on a hot day to put on with jean shorts. But yeah, I do really love this material. It's really pretty. It's just a nice dark, dark navy color. And I like this pattern a lot. I feel like this is just gonna be kind of like my go-to tank top pattern. <laughs> sewing and that is this dress so this is again the Sisley dress and I used this beautiful magical silky satin fabric so I have been holding on to this fabric for a while I got this this summer when my husband and I were in Paris you may recognize this fabric from my first fabric video too I didn't have a lot of this fabric because it was a remnant so I couldn't really decide what I wanted to make I was like I can make a short dress or I can make a skirt or I can make a top but I figured, you know, I don't wear a lot of black black and the black in this satin fabric is really deep black and I don't really have anything that would go with that if I were to make a separate out of this. So I figured, you know, if I was gonna make something, it needed to be one thing that I wear by itself. So I needed to make a dress and it's really cute. It is a little short, so it is a little bit spicy. I'd say I wear this for like a date night or something. I can wear it a little bit more casually I guess if I were to wear this with some of my like brown flat leather sandals and my brown leather bag or something and I could toss an open knit sweater over the top of this. I feel like I could wear it for more of like a casual summer date night but this can also go a little bit fancy. I could wear it with a leather jacket and some black strappy heels for a little bit more of you know a steamy date night situation. So with this one, just like the other ones, I did add this long strap that I can wear around the waist, but I did find on this one, I do like this one without it too. I don't feel like I need that much waist definition if I have a short dress, but it does look cute with this strap on it. So I'm glad that I have both options. I also added these really long tie straps in the back. So I made these super, super long. I just love the feeling of these like kind of dangling behind my back and these are adjustable, but I have them set right now to a length that feels comfortable. I love this dress so much. I'm so glad that I made it as a dress and not a skirt or a top because I do feel like I'm going to wear this a lot more now that I don't really have to think about what to put it with. So since I've shown you guys all the clothes that I currently have in my possession, I felt like it would be good to show you guys all the other things, try to find some pictures of stuff that I have made and given to other people. But before I do that, I just kind of wanted to throw in some of the lessons that I learned and some of my goals for this next year. I'd say the first lesson that I learned was that when you're just starting sewing, it is okay to spend a little bit more on a sewing pattern. And that being said, there are some really good free sewing patterns out there. What I'm talking about is when I'm buying a pattern on Etsy, I see some patterns for like two or three dollars and then I see other patterns for like $10, $15, up to like $20. Buying those patterns when you're first starting out sewing can kind of seem a little bit unnecessary because you're like, oh, I'm not an expert. I don't need to be spending this much money on a pattern. But what I've learned is that you learn so much using those more expensive patterns because 
I have found that you really get what you pay for in terms of instructions. For example, using my tropical research patterns, their patterns on Etsy go for about 15 US dollars. And for myself, $15 did seem like quite a bit to be spending on a pattern since I didn't know what I was doing yet, but that actually ended up being exactly what I needed because the tropical research patterns are so detailed. I feel like I've learned so much just from using the couple patterns that I've used from that shop. I've learned how to do French seams, bias cut sleeve cuffs, a neck binding. I learned how to gather fabric from one of those patterns. And now I can take all of the knowledge that I gained from following those pricier patterns and I can buy the two or $3 pattern and still manage to make something really beautiful without needing all those really detailed instructions. So it seems a little bit backwards to spend more on patterns now and less on patterns later, but I do feel like the more experience I get, the better I'm going to be at adjusting patterns to fit me better and just interpreting really, really vague instructions. All right, and lastly, I did wanna talk about my goals for this next year. So I would say my main goal is to kind of start making things that go together a little bit more, more everyday staples or more of a cohesive wardrobe in general. So all of this stuff was really fun to make. I learned a ton from using all sorts of different fabrics, but all of these are just kind of special one-off items that I love to wear, but none of them really go together. So I'm in the process right now of kind of visually planning a bunch of my upcoming sewing projects just to kind of see them next to each other and get an idea of how I can kind of mix and match those things that I'm going to be making. By no means do I want to make a super neutral capsule wardrobe. I do want to have a lot of cool details in there and fun colors in there too. I'd say that's probably the most exciting thing about sewing to me is having full control of all those details and being able to make a wardrobe that really feels like my wardrobe and nobody else's. So I do want to maintain the fun of having all of that control while still making things that go together easily and that can work for kind of an everyday wardrobe. All right, so now I'm going to show you all the other stuff that I made besides all of these clothes. And first, I'm gonna show you this cute little bunny toy that I made for my daughter. I have made three of these. So I made this one for my daughter, and then I made one for my niece Caroline, and then one for my niece Emily. These turned out so cute. This one has this cute little dress. This is the pattern that I used for it. This shop also sells patterns for different clothes too, so you can make a hat, you can make a dress, you could make overalls. And I really like the idea of having the option to make different clothes for this doll, because Rosalind loves this bunny and I just think it would be so fun if for like little gifts for her I could just make more clothes for her bunny. So this is what it looks like up close. I did hand embroidery for the face. There are some little fuzzies coming out of it just sneaking through that linen fabric. And this is the one that I made for my niece Emily. It turned out really, really cute. And then this is the one that I made for my niece Caroline. And I would say that this was probably the most challenging one just because I did match all of the prints up so that it's fully symmetrical on both sides of the bunny. I love this fabric so much and I do plan on making a little set for myself if I have enough left. All right, and then next I made some couch pillows. I made six total because I did two of each of these. So this was a great way for me to get comfortable installing zippers. The nice thing about having a zipper is that I can wash these whenever I want. And yeah, they turned out pretty good. So this fabric used to be a tablecloth. I thrifted this and I thought that they were really pretty colors and this is just kind of a fun pattern. And then I found this velvety cool fabric at this discount fabric store that I really like. And I just thought that this would be a fun color to add into our living room. And then I have this white, linen blend. It's like a woven textured pillow. This was a good beginner project, just some straight lines and zipper installation. All right, and then next, I made a ton of bags for people for Christmas. First one being this duffel bag for my sister-in-law. I really like how this turned out. I used this really pretty home decor fabric for the outside, and then I lined it with that seersucker cotton that I really love. And this is the pattern that I used from Taika Studios. I love their patterns. I used a lot of their patterns for this bags, um, which you'll see there pattern instructions are really great. They come with photos and really clear written instructions as well. And they have tons of really good bag patterns. All right, and moving on, I made a bunch of these zip pouches. These bags come together really quickly and easily and are really cute. I love like the boxy structure to them. And I was really glad that I had all the experience of adding zippers to all these pillows because that really came in handy when I was making all these bags. I did make a video of me making a bunch of these bags too. So if you want to watch that, it's right up here from the same pattern shop. I also made this wine tote for my father-in-law and I really love how sturdy this bag feels. I'm happy to report that this bag is super sturdy. I love how it turned out and it can carry four bottles of wine without breaking. All right, and then I made two of these craft cases using the Cool Stitches craft case 
pattern. So I really loved how these turned out. I'm super jealous because I have not made one for myself yet and I really want to, so I eventually will. These craft cases are really great. They can hold so many little things. They have a nice little zipper pouch and they're also very cute. Okay, and then the last bag. I don't even know if you would really consider this a bag, but I made this for my husband. This is just a really soft leather, so I wanted to see how my sewing machine would handle it. It was a little tricky. Uh, this got stuck a lot, so I'm glad that I started with something really little, but this is a little business card holder. I just made this pattern. It was very, very simple. So it's just a long rectangle. I measured how wide just like a standard business card is. And then I cut out these. So these are all raw edges, but since it's leather, of course it's not gonna like get messed up around the edges. But yeah, I just thought that was cute. It's nice and flat. So this will fit easily in one of his pockets or something. So he can put his business cards in one side and then business cards that he collects in the other side. Okay, and before I forget, I also made a Sicily slip dress for my friend Mandy for her birthday. And here she is wearing it. It looks really beautiful on her. I just really wanted to make her something that felt special, but also something that she could wear casually if she wanted to. And just like the newest one that I made uh, with the long ties in the back, I also made the back of hers look the same way. All right. So I think that does it for everything I made in my first year of sewing. And if you are still here, thank you for sticking around. This video ended up being way longer than I expected it was going to be. Looking at this rack of clothes, it's a pretty small rack, but a lot of stuff fits on that. And I was expecting this video to be like 10 or 15 minutes long, but I'm pretty sure it's a lot longer than that. So if you have watched this whole thing, thank you so much. Let me know what your favorite thing that I made this year was in the comments. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing that. And as always, if you like this video, like this video. And if you didn't like this video, I hope you like the next one. All right, I'll see you guys later. Bye.